Hi, hey, Peter. Hey, Lauren. How's it going, Stu? Good, good. We're all good here. Uh, I can tell you for sure that I'm not in Tucson because it is 16 degrees outside. So I can imagine it's a lot warmer there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yes, it, yes, it is. <laughs> I am in Tucson and I can I can avow for that. Yep. Okay, good, good. So basically what I'm going to show today are pieces that I would have put out on display in Tucson had we been at the show. And uh, we also just wanted to mention a little bit about what we're doing at the New York City Gallery. Uh, most of you probably know that we've been closed on and off since the virus. But we have had an exhibition. I'm just going to grab the catalog. This exhibition was on at the um, gallery for the last couple of months. And it's our latest catalog called Underground Hues. And it's all about the colors of minerals. So basically, as you can see here in the catalog, it's very colorful. And it was the focus and the theme of the exhibition was colors and minerals. And you can actually buy this catalog on our website. And it's a great catalog. It's a great catalog to have, and it's different than our Emerald catalog. So I'm just gonna grab an Emerald catalog from the last exhibition. And Brian, of course, you knew about the Emerald catalog and the Emerald show. So that- Well, I was there. I filmed, I filmed the, uh, the opening night for you, and that's exactly. still uh, available online. So the difference between the two exhibitions is that the underground use exhibition, everything was available for purchase, whereas the Emerald exhibition was just for educational purposes and to illustrate all the great emeralds that we were able to gather together. So this catalog is available on the website. The hardcover edition of the catalog is available on the website, as well as the underground use. Uh, the next exhibition that we're going to have is going to be starting in mid-February, and Brian and I have already lined up a mineral talk that we're gonna do live from the gallery, and we'll show the exhibition. And, and exhibition, Stuart, can I tell everybody uh, the date for that? Well, uh, did, did we make an exact date yet? I <laughs> God, I hope so. I, I have it down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, okay, well, we have a tentative February 24th. That's yes. Wednesday for Mineral Talks Live. That's perfect. Yes, the exhibition will be out on display. And so these exhibitions will be taking place every three to four months in the gallery. They will be accompanied by a color catalog that you can also purchase on the website. Unfortunately, right now, the gallery is only open by appointment, but, you know, we welcome anybody to come to New York. We'd be happy to, to host them at the gallery through the website. So... Um, we'll start with what would have been in Tucson had we been able to display this year. And for Peter particularly, we're going to start with some Mexican minerals. And this piece here, of course, you'll all recognize where this is from. It's a Veracruz amethyst, but what I like most about it is that it's on this unusual white matrix of muscovite which I've never seen before. Peter, have you ever seen this before? Muscovite? It looks like, that looks like Lamantite. It, you know, it looked like Lamantite and it looked like anhydrite to me, but it tested out as Muscovite. Huh, it, it, it which, must be pseudomorphs because the, the morphology and everything is right for Lamantite and that's been analyzed from there. Um, I, you, you know, that's I really think cool though. Way, I'll have to check that out. It, yeah, I thought it was very odd, very strange, and something I'd never seen before. But I love the contrast between the white and the and the beautiful purple uh, amethyst. It really helps that purple to pop. It does. Yeah. And the next exhibition, which will be coming up in February, where, which we're going to do on Mineral Talks Live, is going to be all about contrast. So um, it'll be minerals that have high contrast like this one. Fantastic. I love that top like one absolutely gemmy crystal dead center there. Oh yeah, isn't that something? It's amazing, yeah, yeah. And the fact that they're nicely separated on the white matrix, yeah, I, I, this is a special piece, I think. So what and, other treasures do you have going on over there? Well, I couldn't help it. We have another Mexican piece, especially for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, I, you'll, I'm sure by now you'll recognize where this is from. This is La Marita Mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the larger, finer pieces that we've ever seen. And it has these exceptional yellow butterscotch crystals. Uh, and, then, and, a, and the matrix is this sort of light yellow or creamy colored mimetite. 
So as we talked about in the, the, the last episode, that uh, the lighter color is actually phosphohedophane. Is that yep. right? Is it really? Oh, okay. Yes. That's great to know. Okay. Excellent. So it's, it mimetites sort of the bright yellow ones and then, then that contrast that gives you that real pop of the mimetite in the, the wolfenite is actually the phosphohedophane. Sort of that oh, fascinating. Okay. We, I did not know that. I'm glad to, uh, to add that to the, to the label. Excellent information. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Um, and Peter, do you know if this mine is still producing? To the best of our knowledge, um, there is no wolfenite coming out at this time? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the mine is closed. They've pulled up all the equipment, and the people who are operating the mine for ore have moved on to someplace else. Uh, the, the big problem with the mine was that they needed to do a lot of pumping to uh, keep the water table down so that they could right. get into the wolfenite zone. And, of course, if they're not mining they're not pumping so um sure. the mine has what they in mexico they call the best watchman that you could ask for which is it's flooded okay yeah i can imagine well so then uh we may never see these wolfenites again that is a significant possibility and you know i know that this mine is a couple of hundred miles from san francisco do you think there's any relationship between the ore bodies no no, uh, not at all. It, it, it's actually closer to Los Lamentos, and it looks more like Los Lamentos than San Francisco. And it huh. genetically, it is more like Los Lamentos or San Pedro Coralitos than than any of those are to uh, in terms of a geologic relation to San Francisco. I see. I see. Well, I love the Wolf and Ice in the Earth. Shame that it produced for such a short period of time. But that that's something about special special finds. You get it, you see a bunch of it, and then poof. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely true. So the next piece, obviously not Mexican, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is this huge fluorite on Celestine from Ohio. And I know that the lighting isn't as good as we would like it, but you can see there is this beautiful root beer color. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Troy. Um, that's much better. And it's got these tremendous crystals. And, you know, my experience from this mine is that rarely do you see crystals of this size. Yeah, no, the, the, the color there, I mean, it's got like a true root beer, almost red undertone that you really get to only see when they get big like that. That's, yes, yes. Is this another specimen that's going to be in your contrast exhibit, considering I how great contrast is actually it, it, it actually is not going to be although it does have great contrast so the only reason you're not going to see any of the contrast pieces today is simply because they are still with our photographer and he's working on the catalog so i was unable to actually grab those pieces to show today but you'll get to see them all with brian uh in february when we do the uh the gallery talk fantastic and this is an old timer, which you guys might recognize because it's been pictured in several books. In fact, I think it's been pictured maybe three times in the Min record. It's a, it's a pink florin on Smokey from Chamonix. Beautiful. Well, that's a famous piece, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was on display in Tucson at one point uh, many years ago. It's in the Icons book and several magazines. I just love that dark gemmy ter termination there and the contrast that it gives, but you've got that lighter color throughout the crystal that really makes those red fluorites pop. Absolutely. That is, that is a special specimen. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're really proud to have this uh, available. And, it's and so hard did, to get pieces of this quality. When did that come out? Um, I first saw it in Tucson, probably, 20 years ago and it was on display in a case with one other specimen this was this came from a collector you may know the name carl kemp yep. and carl had a very small collection and this and he primarily collected pieces from the swiss alps the french alps and this was one of his star pieces that would be anybody's what? star piece hey, exactly i agree with that <laughs> absolutely all right now another piece so this is a, a more recent specimen and it's a fantastic quartz now 
you may remember in Tucson, we had that whole case of quartzes. This was not in the case. We didn't no. own it yet. But that quartz exhibition, which we had planned on doing this past September, had to be canceled. Um, mm -hmm. We are still planning it. We're still working on it. And we still will go through with it. And it might happen this September or maybe even in 2022. But it is definitely on our list to do. And that exhibition will be more like the Emerald Exhibition, where it will just be many of the world's greatest courses. Very few, if any, will be available for sale. Wonderful. Thank you for letting us know, Stuart, because I was going to ask you about that. For those who uh, saw What's Hot in Tucson 2020, Peter did a great interview with Stuart, and they went in-depth on a lot of the incredible, fantastic quartz pieces that were scheduled to be on that uh, exhibit. Absolutely. We did, yes. So, Stuart, and that, that clip's still that, online. That, does that sidecar, that crystal that's jutting out of the big one, does that actually root into the crystal? The little one that's sticking out the side. Can you see it down yeah. inside the... You can just barely see where it enters the crystal. I don't know if we can really get that on, on, on the video, but just barely you can see that it does. I believe it does enter the crystal just a little bit, yeah. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, that's this really is a great cool. piece. This is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's Colombian, yeah. and it's part of this more recent material that's been coming out of Colombia. Most of those crystals... You know, I, I've seen have been smaller, and that thing is just so. They're so gemmy and so. I love the terminations. The terminations yes. just really set it apart. Absolutely, I agree. And uh, this piece will be in that exhibit when it happens. And in fact, all those quartz pieces that you saw in Tucson that we did the interview uh, for the What's Hot in Tucson, I actually have all those still here. <laughs> all the collectors who loaned me their pieces. I still have them and they're still willing to leave them with me for that exhibition. And that really says a lot about our community. It does, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go to the next piece. All right, next piece again is a fairly recent specimen. It's from uh, the, the uh, Malkan mine in Russia. Uh, I'm not crazy about the way the colors are showing up here, but it's just so gemmy and very different than what we've seen. Most of the ones we see are these very strong rubellites. This one has more of a cranberry color um, with a hint of green in the center, but there were not many that came out like this. It looks practically zoned. It is, it's got some zoning going on. Um, the, the colors are very subtle, but yet very strong. Yep. <laughs> Let's try for some lighter colored minerals because the dark ones probably are not showing up as well as I would like. Sorry to leave you with a blank screen, but. So this piece uh, was in the most recent exhibition, the, the underground use. And this is mm. a, a fantastic zoned green fluorite from China with this quartz crystal that just goes straight into it. Is but that the color is just wonderful. It, uh, yeah, it is, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this material. I mean, God, that blue is just to die for. It is. It the, is. the purple cores and the association with the quartz. I can see why it was on exhibit for, for its yeah. color. It, it, it's a great piece. And there was a, it was a pocket that there were actually two pieces, one larger than this and then another piece that had these intense colors. And most of them did not. But also the luster, it's, it's just shocking glassy luster that is just indescribable. It's almost like the faces don't exist. Yeah, fantastic. Well, that would certainly get any fluorite collectors seriously wound up. I, I, I think so, <laughs> I definitely think so. <laughs> so this is an older piece. It's a rutile on kyanite with geritite from Georgia. And you might recognize it because it was the in the American Treasures book, it's the frontispiece for the uh, chapter on Georgia. And it's just got this amazing twinning going on and fabulous luster. Fantastic. And this huge was crystal. formerly, excuse, oh yeah, it's a, a huge crystal, it's completely euhedral. And I, I can't even begin to start telling you where the twinning begins and ends. 
one of the great things about those twins is it's sort of a fun little puzzle to figure out. Absolutely. And I'm going to leave it to someone else to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another great old classic. Of course, oh. you know, you, you, you recognize that right away as being from Elmwood. But what I like about this piece is it's a complete doubly terminated crystal of the finest quality sitting on this dolomite matrix that has the, the druzy calcite. I think it's calcite, yeah, druzy calcite, and then a beautiful sphalerite at the bottom. The combination there is stunning, and I love the transition from, you know, the, the twinning plane really shows up with sort of that clear, you know, truly transparent center and then you know transitions to that i mean it's practically root beer color usually you get excited when they're champagne color but yes wow. yeah it's 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 one for me this is one of the finest quality i've ever seen from uh from elwood yeah the setup on that is gorgeous yeah it, it, exactly it is yeah yeah I think that's not making it to the contrast exhibit. <laughs> oh. No, I know. That's the scary part. And neither is <laughs> this one, which you would think would. But um, this is a, a Jeffrey Mine uh, Grossler on, on white pectolite that uh, is also in the current exhibit, the what we're calling the underground use exhibit. And again, it's, it's all about color. But you're right. The, the contrast, this would have been perfect for our contrast exhibit. And so would the other one. What I like about this is the four separated crystals, just perfectly separated on a white matrix. I mean, how often did this mine ever do that? It looks like a, something out of a collector's, you know, dream specimen that they doodle and wish that it looked <laughs> like that. And there you go, it's reality. Someone, someone online, I we posted this on Instagram, and someone online, I think, called it like a, a snowman with buttons on his shirt or something. <laughs> so, can you show us the back? Is there yeah. a is there a crack that control? Nope, there isn't. No, there isn't nope. a crack that controls that. Nope. I mean, it's really interesting to think about what caused it to grow like that. Is there a? It almost looks like there's a, a fracture or a a feature running like vertically there that there, they there could be right there yeah 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 there definitely could be and that could have been what caused it to grow like this because you know you you see a million of these from this mine and they're almost always just clustered crystals they're rarely separated especially on a white matrix so that's what i thought yeah, no, made it so special it's incredible when the geology stacks up in such a way that it creates something like that i agree absolutely yeah Okay, next piece. That's because geology rules. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, and this too, this is also in our current exhibit, the underground use exhibit. This is from Goma in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And this tourmaline, you know, these are, are fairly recent, at least to us they are. I have not seen many of these before, but it's got this amazing lime green color at the top and then it fades down into this sort of, I guess, pinkish orange color at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it that well in this light, but but it's just such a thick, solid, gemmy crystal with a beautiful termination. I really love when you can really see the the chemistry transition in crystals like this. You know, you you've got the the dominant trace mineral is transitioning there, and absolutely, you go yeah. from a, a red to a just such a stunning green. It's fantastic. And you, when you put this piece in one of the more modern cases with the kind of lighting that we can now accomplish, it, it's just shocking what they look like. It really is. I can imagine. And that piece and um, I think one of the other pieces I showed are also, if you'd like to see more about it, it's on our website in what we call our viewing rooms. And we do have some specimens available there as well. And we're gonna to try to keep that going with more new specimens, especially now that the shows are not on. Stuart, tell the, tell the audience the URL for that website, please. The uh, website is Walensky Minerals, all one word, dot com. And Thank there you. is an S on the end. Some people put Walensky Mineral, but it's WalenskyMinerals.com. And uh, this is an older piece. It's uh, this lime green fluorite on quartz with shoral and clevelandite from Pakistan. 
And what I like about this piece particularly is the three-dimensional quality of the green fluorite and the luster of the green fluorite. So in person, that's more of a lime green rather than an aqua? It's, it's, if it's coming through as aqua, then it's wrong. It's definitely a lime green. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And is that a... Wow, oh, that's a very interesting modification there. It, it is a very strange crystal. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about the size of a golf ball. And it's on a complete specimen. And what makes this piece even more special to me and special today is that this comes from my friend Irv Brown's collection. And unfortunately, as you all know, Irv would have been with us in Tucson today and he would have been, done his segment directly after mine and shown off his special pieces. But unfortunately, uh, he cannot be here today. God, you so, just killed my, now is Irv Brown in the closet joke? I, really, I know, I know, I wish he was. Wouldn't that be great if I could have done that? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but so this is, this is from Irv's personal collection. He, he's had it on display in Tucson. I believe he had it in the case last Tucson when he won an award, and I'm embarrassed to say I don't remember which award he won. I think he won Desitels. the Desitels, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I believe, was in his Desitels case. Mm -hmm. Great. How nice. I ever got it out of him, I don't know, but who knows? Occasionally, I get lucky with Irv and get something good out of him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what else you've got here. So here, the next piece is what we would all think in the mineral world as oh. somewhat common but yet not common when it looks like this, in my opinion. Wow. Uh, you know, you've got amethyst with the anhydrite pseudomorphs or quartz after anhydrite pseudomorphs. And it's just the way it formed with this, just quartz in the center and then this explosion radiating out from it, which, you know, to me makes it in, in a class by itself. It just takes it out of the realm of what, you know, we sometimes call decorator rocks and into the realm of real collectible minerals. It looks like a flower practically exactly yeah or, or like a sunburst yeah and it is an exceptional quality specimen as well it's got really sharp pseudomorphs the color in the amethyst is a little bit on the light side but i still love the piece wild fantastic setup oh thank you so coming up in the future we're going to be doing something like we did in the the quartz exhibit, which will be coming the emerald exhibit, we have we're fortunate enough to have access to one of the greatest collections of inclusions in the world. And we're I don't know we don't have a date yet set for this, but there's about 200 pieces in this collection, and they are some of the finest inclusions we've ever seen. In fact, if you, any of you remember from the emerald exhibit, we had the emerald and quartz, the only known gem emerald and quartz, which is part of this collection. And this collection, we're working on it. It will be uh, a book we're going to publish on it, and it's going to be an exhibition, uh, and it'll only be this one collection. And this piece, so some of them will be polished, like this one is polished into a ball. <clears throat> Most of them will be natural. This is uh, siderite inside quartz from Brazil. What, what I like about this collection is that it has so many examples of very fine, sharp quality crystals that are included and we're trying to, I don't know if I, I don't know if I call it educating people or teaching people about inclusions and that's that some of them must be polished. It is just the nature of the inclusion collecting. And therefore we don't feel it affects the collectability of it because what you're collecting is what's inside and that's what, not what's outside. It's almost a preservation technique naturally. Right, exactly. I mean, you have to look at it beyond what, you know, what uh, the th thought of, oh, you polished it, well, then it's no longer natural. It's the uh, neurological this... equivalent of a fly caught in amber. Exactly. Yeah, perfect, perfect analogy. Absolutely true. Now, this piece you may recognize because it's pictured in Peter Bancroft's original book. Not, no, I shouldn't say original book, his second book, uh, Gem and Crystal Treasures. And this was Peter's personal piece with pyrite and quartz from Brazil. And I think it's, in again, in my opinion, it is the finest pyrite in quartz I've ever seen. 
So, Jemmy, those windows looking at each one of those. Oh, it's it's and 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 look at the sharpness and the quality of those pyrites. Oh yeah. And, or you you could look through uh, uh, Uncle Pete's book as much as you want, but any photograph does not compare to seeing that thing live and rotating on camera. I mean, that was incredible. That's true. That's true. Yes. And here is an older piece of um, dioptase and quartz from the Congo. And you can see, you, uh, we've seen some more modern pieces coming out of the same region where the dioptase is sometimes in the quartz and out of the quartz. This piece is only inside the quartz. And it's nice because you can, if you look at carefully, you can see the layer of quartz. Then the, obviously the, the um, dioptase was formed and then another growth of quartz came over it. I love how there's the the smoky apps. It looks like the the later stage has the smoky aspect that really yes. makes everything pop out and give it that extra little jazz. Yes, absolutely. Now, I just want to reiterate that these inclusions, we are working with this collection. We have been working with it for a while. It's going to take us a while to get all this published and photographed and on exhibit, but we promise you it's going to happen someday and I think you're going to be impressed. So here we have quartz in quartz, but obviously something has grown over the, the first generation of quartz and outlined it just so beautifully. Wow. And, and when, as we go through this collection, like I say, there's almost 200 pieces, it's just one, fantastic inclusion after another. They're, they're, they're really, they're, they're so special that it's hard to describe. And that's why this, this collection deserves its very own, uh, its very own book and its very own exhibition. Fantastic. And, There's so much you can learn about the, the crystal morphology and paragenesis and chemistry from studying inclusions. It's well, what, what's, what's driving me crazy, though, is as I go through the collection, occasionally I come across an inclusion. Now, not this one. This one is clearly rutile, but I come across an inclusion that I absolutely cannot identify. And uh, that's going to be uh, a bit of a problem going forward. There are a handful in this collection that we're not 100% sure what we're looking at. Mm. You could just call it not sure I. Well, we could, we could. And some of them, yes, yeah, some of them will just have to be inclusions that we are, we are unclear about. Um, you know, we have, we've asked other experts as well to look at some of these. And occasionally we do find one that we just simply don't know. And of course, you know, rutile is very common inclusion in quartz, but this one is particularly beautiful because of the rich coloration and how much rutile is in there and how it just went right up the center yeah. of this crystal. The, the looks, orientation it, there is... It, it looks like you've taken a shock of Lauren's hair and stuck it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like, Lauren, we can name this one after you. If you'd like. <laughs> we would be happy that would be a great it. photo. We got to get uh, Scoville together with Lauren and uh, Stuart, and we'll arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the more recent mortarite in quartz that are coming out of Brazil. Oh, that's Just, wild. I love that color. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? That um, is incredible. And yeah. the Wow. I mean, that wouldn't survive if it wasn't inside the courts in many ways. You know, that's such a true statement that some people don't realize at first that many of these pieces would absolutely, they wouldn't, we wouldn't have them uh, because exactly that, like, like those hair-like root heels. I mean, they, they would just not be uh, available to us like that if they weren't inside the courts. Or even in some cases, they're not stable unless they're they're in exactly. Quartz That's or... right. That's right. I mean, things like realgar. When you find a realgar in quartz, it will be like that forever. Uh, whereas outside the uh, quartz, my God, or outside the calcite, usually not quartz, but uh, they they just who knows what'll happen, and how long they'll last. And this is a, uh, a fabulous piece from uh, the Bobisberg with uh, amethyst clear quartz, and then you've got these hematite inclusions at the tip. Huh. And the colors just, I love the, the three colors. You just so rarely get them with three colors like this. You know, Stuart, you say you're going to put on an exhibit of inclusions. And yes. I almost want to say, oh, quaint idea. And then you start showing what you're talking about. And I start thinking, 
I cannot wait to see this. Well, <laughs> exactly, Brian. That's how we feel too. This 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 goes so far beyond uh, what we think of at first uh, for inclusions. Now, the collection does have 200 pieces. Of those 200, I would say 100 are truly exceptional and have never been seen before. And the other 100 are more what I would say maybe are uh, educational or study grade uh, inclusions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is epidote in quartz. This piece has obviously been polished, but Again, like Lauren said earlier, look at those thin hair-like crystals. They would never have survived outside of quartz. Wow, look at that plate. I, it's, it's cool too, because the, the, the quartz encased the entire plate. It's not just one side. And it's right, exactly. on both sides. Yeah, I mean, you can even see the bottom of it where they grew up from here. And in between there's a few inside this little gap, but just, and, and, and every one of those hair-like crystals is actually a transparent green crystal. Wow. You know, if you had told me that uh, Troy had, had taken some epoxy and poured it on the top there, and that's what we're looking at, I'd believe you, because that quartz is so clear. It is, it is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't give away my secrets, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, okay, we'll edit no. that out. Uh, I guess we're running close to out of time, but I'll, I'll, I, I would like to just include uh, at least this one more piece. This piece is very, very special. Um, it, it almost doesn't look real. And believe it or not, we're still not 100% sure what we're looking at in here. And yet the crystals are insanely sharp. It looks like, look like wooden sticks inside. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's coming through or not. I hope it is. But... We're going to do more research on this and, and see if we can get it tested and be positive what it is. Most people believe this is rutile, but I'm not 100% sure. Is that also Brazilian? Uh, all this, Brazilian, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, I would say probably 50% or more of the collection is Brazilian because we just are lucky enough to get all these great inclusions from Brazil. Yeah. Well, this exhibit is going to be called diversity and inclusion it'll be well that's a name we could we, we haven't decided that name yet before. <laughs> <laughs> we, so we the answer is now. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and this this piece i i really i really love it's um clearly chloride inside quartz it has been polished but still i mean look at the the the, the beauty of this uh deep green chloride that, that formed inside the quartz. It's just amazing. You know, it's out. almost like something frozen in time, you know? It's just, well, it's you know, that's, that's a phrase I use all the time. Thank you, Brian. I'm glad that you feel the same way. It's a phrase I use about these because that's exactly what it is. It is a moment in time that was frozen inside this quartz crystal and that we're able to see, I don't know, millions of years later, exactly what happened. If it's Brazilian, it's probably billions of years later. Or, or, or billions, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, billions works. I like that too. <laughs> okay, and here is the uh, the number one piece in the collection, which if you were mm -hmm. able to see the collection in, uh, um, in New York at the time, that's an, a gem emerald inside quartz. Wow. And this piece is not polished. That is a wild piece. And, and what mine is that from? This is from Muzo. Muzo, okay. Huh. And it is, it is the only known gem emerald included in quartz ever found uh, anywhere in the world. And it's actually published in several books and it made it to a TV show. It was on a um, National Geo special that uh, Ron Ringswood was one of the hosts. And he showed this while it was still in Colombia with the original owner. Wow. And we, we acquired this for the collector who now has owns the collection. And it literally took us 10 years of negotiating to acquire this piece. Wow. That is such a great piece. Yeah, and it's funny because when we did the Emerald exhibit, and this is in the catalog as well, in the Emerald catalog, this, there were two pieces that everyone said was their favorite, and this was one of them. Wild. 
Somebody wanted to make it into a pendant, but you threw them out of the gallery when they said that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that, that top is not allowed. No, no, exactly. Yeah. I could see Rock Courier wearing that around his neck. <laughs> He's probably the only guy who can get away with it. <laughs> I don't know how much time do we have left, Brian? Is there? Um... Uh, you got another four minutes before we have to cut out. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, we'll I'll find you some more pieces here that um, I think would interest you. Let's see. This one. Let's see. This one. I did that one. Yes. Um, again, another inclusion. Uh, this is um, asbestos in quartz. I love the flow, and and that's another case where because the asbestos is encased, you don't have to, you know, it it, it removes some of the stigma of the asbestos mineral itself because Absolutely. that asbestos form is contained as it Absolutely. were. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it poses no harm to anyone, obviously, and it, it's just these are really like natural works of art. I mean, it just it, the the way that swoops through the ports is. It looks like something that, as, as Brian said earlier, it looks like something that someone created using acrylic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and also just the flow in there has like a cloud-like fe feature. So here is, again, one of my favorites. That's a scene inside quartz. Now this piece, someone decided to cr make it, be creative and make it into this nice square, but that doesn't bother me as a collector. It's- Is that Alpine? Have, and, excuse me? Is that Alpine? No, this is uh, Brazilian. Brazilian, oh, and, right. Yeah, yeah, and it's a Brazilian sphene in Kai Quartz, a complete crystal of gem green sphene that's been totally encased in quartz. I I've never seen another one like it. Is it a twin? Or is uh, it just yeah, appearing like that on the... I think it is. I think it is a twin, yes. Yeah, I do believe so. That's really cool. Marvelous. Sounds like it's going to be an exciting exhibit. Uh, we're hoping so. I mean, that's that's the plan. You know, we want to do these exhibits. Here's another uh, another pirate in quartz, a more recent one that came out of Brazil. Um, can't really. It's a little bit hard sometimes for it to focus on the inclusion, you know, because you've got the crystal outside that it's trying to focus on. But yeah, th this exhibit will be something uh, I think. Uh, that will not only be exciting, but also of lasting value because the book will document all of these. And I think that anything that gets documented uh, in, in, in that way will be of uh, value to future collectors. You should are, make a film out of it. I know someone who could travel there and film it for you. Really? Oh, wow. Uh -huh. well, would you give us his name and number? We'd appreciate it, Brian. That'd be great. Not Thank a you. problem. <laughs> Check your email. <laughs> <laughs> No, we had, we had a lot of fun at the uh, Emerald exhibit and I'm so glad that Brian was able to film it because for us, you know, these are, these are for us, this is a whole new way of, of approaching the mineral world and the mineral business and mineral collecting. And uh, it's so great to have it that in a way that people can watch it in the future and see what, what happened. And we're, we're really, really proud of that. Well, I'm gonna tell the viewers right now that that is online. And if you go to Mineral Films, plural, dot com slash furas tears that's f-u-r-a-s-t-e-a-r-s -E so mineralfilms.com slash furas tears you can watch that uh that video that we made at the walensky gallery uh when we had the emerald exhibit there yes and if you and if you ask me to to repeat the um the story of furas tears I'm, i can't <laughs> i'm sorry on that day, I had it down and I could. And you did a beautiful job of having me and Troy and, and uh, my son Connor do portions of it. And we edited it together. And actually, that me personally, that was my favorite part. Because yeah. um, as a, a lifetime mineral dealer, to have my two sons join me in, in our business, and they're the next generation, much like Peter and Lauren, it, 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 it's really something special. I'm sure Peter understands that better than anybody. I probably do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And there, there's Troy. Troy, you are the gal you are the gallery manager, correct? He is. I am. I'm always there. Fantastic. All right. That's gonna do it uh, for our time with you guys today. Thank you so much. Totally blown away. Incredible as always, Stu. You've never let us down.